If I told you there was an old-world survival trick so powerful it kept wood alive for centuries, sometimes even outlasting the people who built with it, you'd probably think it was some mystical secret locked away in a forgotten book. But this one isn't magic. It's real. It's practical. And it's one of the most underestimated technologies our ancestors mastered long before World War II long before industrial chemistry, and long before anyone could spell preservative. And the best part? Once you understand how it works, you realize just how genius it truly was. Let's dive straight into it, because this medieval preservation method isn't just interesting. It's a reminder of how survival knowledge built the world we stand on today. Medieval builders understood something vital. Nature eats everything. Rain, fungus, insects and time all want to tear wood apart. Yet across Europe and other ancient settlements, archaeologists keep finding old timber beams, water wheels, docks, barn posts, and bridge supports that survived impossibly long, sometimes for hundreds of years. What was the trick? They soaked the wood in flowing water. Not a splash, not a rinse, a full immersion. Weeks, months, sometimes even years. This simple act unlocked a transformation that science only truly explained centuries later. But the medieval survivors didn't need textbooks. They had observation, repetition, and an almost stubborn devotion to patience. The water bath forced the sugars, starches, and nutrients out of the timber. And those nutrients are exactly what fungus, bacteria, and insects feed on. Once the wood was emptied from the inside, it became boring, literally boring, for anything that wanted to eat it. The result was wood that didn't just resist rot. It defied it. People often imagine water as something that weakens wood. And, well, they're not wrong. Waterlogging can make it heavy and useless for construction. But medieval craftsmen knew the difference between temporary soaking and controlled preservation. Running water did something still water couldn't. It carried away the internal sugars bit by bit. No chemicals, no additives, just nature doing the hard work. Once removed from the stream or pond and properly dried, the wood hardened into something almost stone-like. You can still find wooden foundations in old European cities that were shaped this way, preserved in the same condition centuries later. Even the famous piles holding up parts of Venice were prepared using versions of this soaking method. The city literally stands on medieval wood that refused to rot. That's the kind of survival engineering that deserves respect. If you've ever split fresh wood, you can smell the sweet sap inside. That's fuel for rot. When medieval builders soaked their timber, they weren't just washing it. They were stripping out the rot fuel. Think of it like removing oxygen from a fire. Without the internal sugars, decomposition has nothing to feed on. So fungus? Gone. Bacteria? Starved. Wood-boring insects? They moved on. And when that nutrient-depleted wood dried slowly, very slowly, it compacted and tightened. The fibres locked together. The structure grew denser. You didn't just get preserved wood. You got stronger wood. 
For survivalists today, this ancient knowledge hits hard. It reminds us that the strongest solutions aren't always the ones filled with chemicals or modern tools. Sometimes they're literally flowing down a river. Here's something worth appreciating. The medieval world moved differently. They built with the future in mind, not the weekend after next. Soaking wood for months sounds insane today. Who has that kind of patience? But remember, they weren't watching a clock. They were building houses meant to outlive them. Barns their grandchildren would use. Bridges meant to hold armies. And here's the part that always amazes historians. Some of these water-preserved beams lasted longer than metal components that were added centuries later. Iron rusted away. The medieval wood kept standing. This wasn't luck. It was a mindset. The survival mindset. The long game mindset. And it's one of the reasons this method still appears in restoration work today. If you're part of the legacy of survival community, you already know that history's greatest lessons aren't trapped in dusty books. They live through the skills people used to stay alive. This preservation trick is a perfect example of that pure survival intelligence our ancestors carried naturally. This method matters because it shows what humans can do with limited tools and unlimited perseverance. It proves that the difference between decay and endurance often comes down to knowledge, not equipment. And, you know, it highlights exactly why digging into the past can give you an edge in the present. Whether you're into homesteading, woodworking, historical engineering, or just love seeing how old world wisdom still applies today, this technique is a lesson from people who build things to last, not to be replaced every few years. After soaking, the drying process was just as important. Take it out too fast and you risk cracking. Dry it evenly sheltered from direct sun, and the timber becomes incredibly stable. Medieval carpenters stored their soaked logs under shade, stacked in precise patterns that allowed air to flow slowly around them. They didn't rush the process. They respected it. The payoff? Wood that behaved predictably. Wood that didn't twist or cup. Wood that shrugged off moisture and pests. Wood that stood in damp cellars, river banks, and ground-level beams without giving up. When you handle timber like that today, it feels almost eerie, dense, solid, unnaturally preserved. But it's all natural, 100% survival technique. No gimmicks. No modern preservatives, just water, time, and skill. Even though this method predates World War II by centuries, it quietly shaped the world military powers fought over. Infrastructure, roads, bridges, ports relied on preserved timber. Supply routes mattered, stable dockyards mattered, forts mattered. And what do all these things depend on? Wood that doesn't fail. The armies of the past marched on preserved timber more than anything else. And, you know, when you see how strong water-treated wood could become, it makes sense why entire kingdoms trusted it. This wasn't just construction. It was strategy. We often look at medieval life as primitive, but techniques like this show just how wrong that idea is. 
When you break the method down scientifically, it's brilliant. When you view it through the lens of survival, it's inspiring. And honestly, when you see how long the results lasted, it's almost unbelievable. You know, the fact that beams preserved with this method are still intact today means their creators did something right. So right that modern engineers actually study the results. There really aren't many inventions you can say that about. And that's exactly why this trick deserves a place here on Legacy of Survival. It's knowledge like this that helps us understand what endurance truly looks like. If you enjoyed this dive into survival intelligence from the medieval world, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, share this video with someone who appreciates real history. Let's keep these powerful old world skills alive. Legacy of Survival